What is up, guys? Welcome back to another Let's Draw. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and in today's new Procreate tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can take a sketch like the one you see here and transform it into a fully finished and rendered design complete with shadows and highlights, all without using any outlines at all. So today's technique, we're gonna be using the Alpha Lock combined with the freehand lasso selection tool, which is gonna allow us to make a high resolution design using only about four or five layers. So that means you following along at home, doesn't matter what iPad you have, you can follow along same resolution and not have to worry about running out of layers. How cool is that? So if you wanna see the process from beginning to end and follow along step by step, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video. This one's gonna be a long one, but it's a full on tutorial. This is gonna be something that you would actually take a class on like with Skillshare or Udemy, but hey, it's free on YouTube on my channel. So hang in there, stick with it. You'll learn a lot of useful information. I'm using the iPad Pro. This is a Gen 4 2020 model. The app is Procreate Gen 2 Apple Pencil, and let's get started. My canvas today, I already got this made 4,000 by 4,000 pixel 300 dpi and we're going to use very limited numbers of layers today so if you have an older generation ipad or a non ipad pro this is going to help you out if you run out of layers on higher res canvases so feel free make it the full size we're not going to use that many layers probably maybe four or five at the most so you'll be fine so let's get started i'm going to sketch this out first and keeping up with the theme of the last tutorial with the recolor method. I'm gonna stick with that marine ocean life theme and we did an octopus in that one. This one's gonna be a crab. So for this, I'm gonna just do the sketch with my texture grain inking brush. This is part of my texture pack that's available on Gumroad. I'll link that in the description below. I'm also gonna use one of these textures too once we start to actually color this in and add the highlights and shadows. But feel free if you don't want those, feel free to look through any of the other brushes here in Procreate and pick something that works for you. So let's just start this out. I'm just gonna do just a light sketch here, kind of a little smushed oval circle thing here for the body. We'll get that in there. And then let's just work the legs out around the bottom here. This is why I wanted to do a crab because the way that these legs kind of overlap and almost have that separate joint area between the top, middle, and bottom parts, it's really going to kind of explain this technique quite well. So that's why I think in ahead, I was like, yeah, this is going to be perfect. So that's what we're going to do. Shrink this down just a little bit to make room for his one on the side there. Get these in here. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get his claws up here. So I'm just gonna do kind of an oval to kind of shape out where these are gonna go. And from there, I'm gonna pull down the arms. See, it's just kind of like a L shape here with the L bottom kind of just switched out there. I'm gonna put a line in here just for where that crease comes in, where the arm folds from the upper arm to the lower arm. Get the elbow kind of right back in here. We'll do the same thing on this side. So get those in there. Let's go ahead and get the actual claws worked in. There we go. Do the same on this side. This is where some people would use the symmetry tool, but I really like to do each side separate just so it doesn't look, you know, too mechanical and too perfect. So I don't rely on the symmetry tool too much as I'm going through. I'd really like to have everything a little bit more organic, but you could save time if you want to do the uh, symmetry tool on something like this. It's totally up to you if you're using Procreate. So, all right, got all that in there. Let's go ahead and kind of split this up, give them a top and bottom. So we're going to do this kind of under part here, belly, a different color. And let's get these eyes in here. So we'll do like one big eye here. And then maybe kind of one, it's like angry, annoyed eye with the brow coming around like that there. Kind of glow of 
inside the pupils right there. And then for the mouth, let's bring that down here and just kind of almost like a kind of upset mouth, but not super angry. It's just kind of maybe slightly annoyed there. So there we go, that is our basic sketch, something real quick and easy. So now we're gonna go ahead and start actually coloring this in. And like I said, this technique, it's not using any outlines, it's just kind of coloring using the sketch layer as our reference of where everything is gonna go at. So I've already got the palette for this made up right down here just to save some time in the video. If you want to follow along with this, I will go ahead and post this palette over on my website. It's bjdell.com. If you go to the uh, YouTube reference material section over there, which I'll link it in the description below, you can download this palette and follow along. And I think I'll go ahead and actually clean up the sketch a little bit after the video. And I'll go ahead and put the sketch up too. So if you guys want to actually download the sketch and follow along and color in on top of that, you can. It'll be over there. So just tons of materials coming at you today. So let's go ahead and go up here to layers and we're going to make a new layer. This is going to be kind of our base colors. We're going to do, like I said, a few separate layers for this. And when we do shadows and highlights, they're all going to go actually on the same color flats layer. So let's go ahead and we'll drag this down here underneath the lines and the uh, sketch. And then let's go ahead and go with this first color here. This is gonna be the body color of the upper section and then also the claws and the arms and, and the legs. So what I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna start with the, the legs down here and I'll zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. And let me go ahead and I'm gonna use just the same brush, I think. Let's see how this one works. Gotta turn up the opacity again here. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and use that one. So what we're going to do is just kind of follow around these lines. And you'll see here, I'm just using these kind of as a guide, as a reference. I'm not really worried about sticking to them too much. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. So you'll see I'm just kind of following around. Connecting these then will allow me to drag and drop the colors in here. And then just kind of repeating this process around the outline here. And this, you don't have to make sure it's too perfect because we're gonna drop that body color in actually over top of this. So it's gonna cover up anything that we're not perfect on. So you don't have to worry about making that 100% even and perfect looking. It's gonna give us a little bit of leeway once we Drop that color of the body in on top. If you see this here too, you'll see kind of some uneven strokes. You got some open white areas. If you hold down your brush and drag here to the right, that's the color drop threshold. That's gonna fill in any of those gaps that you have. This one, I'm gonna have to go back around because it won't fill it in now that I messed up on that and went too far forward. But you'll see here, like I said, just some white open gap areas dragging that brush either left or the pencil left or right will work wonders to fix this problem. This is why zooming in is a pretty big deal too, because if you're too far out, you wouldn't even see that these little white areas exist. So this will happen quite a bit too with this brush. It's a textured brush. So if you are filling in with a textured brush and don't have the color drop threshold turned up high enough, you are going to get these kind of funky white part so definitely like i said play around with it zoom in don't worry about leaving the the canvas the perfect you know full screen size while you're doing it that's one of the best things about digital art that i love and if you get too far up it's gonna fill in everything so there we go all right so we've got the legs done let's go ahead and go up here and do the arms and the claws like I said, see here, I'm overlapping this just because I know that I am going to fill that in later and we'll be good. Get these filled in. And this one. And if you guys watched my previous video about coloring in fast and that recolor method that I used, 
You'll see here, I talked about in that video that I don't use it all the time if it's just little one-off pieces or not huge areas or uh, multiple areas like that are really complicated just because it does take some time to go up there to that menu and it's really easy just to drag and drop over here. So you'll see, that's why I said in that video, I don't always use that. It's gotta be in certain cases, certain circumstances to kind of justify it. And this is not one of those cases. So that's why I'm doing it with the drag and drop. I will link that video up here in the corner though, if you wanna check it out. All right, so we've got the arms and the legs. This is all gonna be one layer. We're done with that layer. So we're gonna make a new layer and this is gonna be our body layer. So. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn these off for just a second so I can see this layer a little bit better. And then I'm just gonna drag this around. I'm gonna start this actually right here in the middle of the eye. I know sometimes when you get a big shape like this, it's hard to get it connected just perfectly. And the eyes are actually gonna sit on top of the body once we do it. So if we start here and it doesn't line up perfectly, like if we got a line here and it kind of comes here, it won't matter because that eye is going to hide it because it's going to be on top. So let's go ahead and start there and just kind of drag this around following that pretty much as close as we can. There we go. Now I can just kind of connect that there like that and fill it in. And let's see, it might warp it just a little bit to get it a little bit closer to my original design. I think that's pretty close there. All right. So let's go ahead and go back up now to our bra or our color palette. And we're going to go with this pink that's sitting next to that reddish orange. That's going to be that underbelly that we're going to use. So going back up to our layers now, let's go ahead and click on our body layer. We're going to set this to alpha lock so that we can actually color in covered alpha lock quite a bit in videos in the past, but if you guys aren't familiar, what this does is it allows you when you color in to only color in, see nothing there, only color in on the colors that already exist on that layer that's alpha locked. So it makes it really nice because this here, we can kind of just draw that line there and be able to only color in on the body. So here we go, let's fill this in. The uh, colors here are really close. That's why I can't really use the color drop on this because the pink and that red orange, it's gonna be a little bit too close to the same hue and it's gonna try to fill in both of them. So that's why I'm doing it like this and just doing it by hand, but you see it goes pretty fast. So, all right, let's turn on our legs again. Make sure everything matches up, which See, it doesn't really, so if we want to go ahead and pull those up, or we can pull the body down. I think I'm going to pull the body down just to kind of cover those up. And there we go. We are good. Looks all right. So one more layer. We're going to add this one right here. This is going to be the eyes. Eyes are going to be white, though, so let's go ahead and change our background color now. Let's just do uh, kind of like a tan color for our background so we can actually see where the eyes are going once we draw them. So let's go ahead and go back to our white. And on that new layer, I'm just going to draw an oval. And holding that down there, kind of locks that in, fill that in there. Same thing over here. Okay, getting that eye locked in there and then I'm gonna do that eyebrow over top uh, let's go ahead and I think I'm gonna make a new layer for that so total we're gonna have four different layers plus the sketch layer which we're gonna eventually get rid of anyways so this is gonna be that eyebrow and then we'll also do the pupils on this one so I'm gonna switch my color here to this next one to the right so we're on the third one over now click on that and my brush is a tad bit smaller. And draw this kind of eyebrow coming off to the side here. Kind of pointy at the end, which I don't want it going over too far into the uh, into the claw there. So I'm gonna kind of fine tune that a little bit. Well, see, I really like this texture too, just because it makes it look a little bit more interesting than being, you know, perfectly flat. So 
All right, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and get the eyes. I'm going to keep it on this layer, and I'm just going to drop down to this darker color right here, this far one. This is actually what we're going to use for the really dark shadows, but I think it's going to look good on the eyes too. So let's go ahead and get those knocked in. And with this one, once again, just doing that oval and kind of holding down the brush to or the pencil to lock in that perfect oval shape. So there we go, and let's go ahead and get the highlights in there. I'm just going in with the white. All right, there we go. So that's pretty much all done. Last thing I wanna do is get this mouth kind of blocked in. So I'm gonna go back down to, I think here, uh, let's see, let's just go to the body layer and for color let's go back to that same one that we used for the eyebrow there and we're just going to really lightly kind of knock this in i'm going to turn down the opacity on this just a tad bit because i don't want it too dark I want to just kind of give the slight notion that that's where the mouth is and we'll kind of build this up here in a little bit with the uh, the shadows and highlights so now that we've got everything kind of where we want it to be let's go ahead and turn off our sketch layer and you can see what we're left with we're left with just pretty much our color flats looks really basic right now but that's all about to change here in a little bit so i kind of like this look too to where he's got this one crazy eyebrow just you know kind of given that mean mug look and then there's none over here i just i like that <laughs> having one i think that's funny uh so let's go ahead and go back down to our bottom layer this is our layer with the the claws and the arms and the feet and back up to our color palette we're going to go with this one right here so the second row down the first color this is going to be our uh, first kind of shadow color it's going to be lighter this one's our darker one so we're going to click on that i'm going to switch my brush over same texture pack here i'm going to go with the paper texture kind of like this one uh, it gives a kind of cool look when you don't use it super big if you go super big with the brush you're going to see paper uh, if you go smaller it just gives a really nice texture to it so with this, we want to go down to the layer of the legs and we're going to alpha lock this because like I said, we're going to actually go in and do all the shadows, highlights and everything on that same layer. So you don't have to worry about making separate layers. That's why anybody can follow along with this no matter what iPad you've got. So first thing I'm going to start with is the body's going to kind of cast off a shadow. So there's going to be kind of some weight there. So you're going to have a shadow run and clear around the bottom. I think light source wise, I'm going to have it coming in from the top left. So we're going to have kind of highlights on the left hand side of things. And then the shadows are going to be falling on the right hand side. So keep that in mind as we start to go in and actually shadow this in. So I'm going to go ahead and test this out and see size wise. I think that's pretty good there. And I'm just going to go around the bottom. So you can see once again, because we've got these on separate layers, because we've got this on alpha lock, that allows us to drag around the shadow without actually going into that pink color of the belly. So it makes it really simple and nice. The only problem here is, of course, like I said, we want these to kind of look stacked like we had in the sketch. So we've got to build these up. That's where the selection tool and the lasso tool is going to come in. It's going to make it super, super easy. So that's what the kind of... I guess the meat and potatoes of today's tutorial is on and that starts right now. So we've got that selected. We want to make sure we're on freehand. And what we're going to do is just kind of go around here and select this top portion. The key here, take your time because you want this to follow that exact path that you've already laid out with the colors. If you get it too low or too high it's going to look off so this might be something you've got to play around with a little bit and i'm going to keep up with the same color and you'll see too this brush is super super pressure sensitive i'm barely touching the screen right now and it allows me to just kind of build this up and you can see i've kind of got this curve it's giving it a three-dimensional feel it actually has kind of that that shape to it and it looks really really cool so now that I've got that done, I'm going to go back to my darker color and just hit the back side of this just a tad bit and kind of add this in. Once again, this is just kind of building up that three-dimensional feel to it. 
And that's that. So from here, to make this super easy, let's go ahead and we wanna go down to this next one. Now, if you were to then try to select this, you've already got this kind of line going on here. It's gonna be super hard to trace over and get that exact, but there's an easy way to do this. If you hold down your selection tool again, it's gonna bring up the menu down here at the bottom. And then we just need to go to invert. So that's gonna invert that selection we just did. It's gonna keep that same selection, but just allow us to color in everything other than this. So that's gonna allow us to come down here in color. That's where we're gonna be able to build up the look that that's a separate piece. So back to my brush here, back to the lighter color and you see what happens. Since we've got that inverted, we can color under that. And now it looks like two separate pieces. You get that effect of that joint in there. They're kind of separate. They are coming together, one stacked on top of the other, and it builds it up and gives it a lot of realism. Going back here, we're gonna go back to the darker one and just kind of hit along the sides just a tad bit. And then we're gonna go back to our selection again. And we're going to do the same thing here at the bottom. And you can see here, I kind of missed some of the lines here coming around, but that's okay. So just making sure that the path of this follows along perfectly. You see, it's not really exact there, so it might take a few times back and forth, getting that perfect flow to the line. Oops. And going back to the brush, we can start to color that in. See, once again, there's the shadow and the buildup. The way I'm bringing this around with the curve, it kind of has that three-dimensional feel. You can see that that has kind of like a, a curve and a shift to it. Back to the darker color to just hit a little bit darker on the edges. And there we go. So now we just need to do the same thing here with the next one. Following that line around. Going to our brush, going back to the lighter color. And then back to the darker. And then, once again, holding down selection, hitting invert, and going back up to our brush, and that's gonna allow us to hit that one underneath. Oops, I think I got the wrong color selected there. Key here is just kinda like I said, pull this around in a curve so it has that three-dimensional look to it. That's the key there, is you don't want it to be a, a perfect straight line across. Now going back up to our selection tool again. Selecting the bottom one, going back to our brush, going back to our lighter color, and hitting this one. Back to our darker color. And then basically we just need to repeat this process on all of the different legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now that you guys have the explanation, you can go ahead and finish that up. I'm going to kind of time-lapse the video here just because it's gonna be the same process over and over again. And once I'm done with that, we'll come back and pick it up. Okay, now that we're done with the shadows and the legs, we're gonna move up to the claws and the arms and then basically do the same thing up there. So let's go ahead and we'll start on this side over here first. So once again, just want to approach this the same way, grab that lasso tool. I'm gonna work on the arm first. So we're going to 
draw underneath the claw here. Get that selected. Go back up to my color palette, get that lighter shadow. And just start hitting in underneath that claw to separate that. And then we'll also drag down around this back side. Because once I said that light source was coming in from that top left hand corner. We'll do that. And then I'm gonna go real small with this. And go in here with that crease. So I'm gonna kind of build that up, get the crease started, and then we'll go back in and kind of shadow it in to make it look a little bit more natural, like it's not just a, a solid line coming off of there. Shadow in here too to separate that arm from the body. So there we go. And now we can go ahead and go up here to the top part. So once again, I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky because this is a pretty long kind of shape here. So we need to make sure that this, like I said, lines up with what we're going for. not only here, but then also down here. That's close enough, I think, there. We can be careful down here so it doesn't overlap too much. I'm more worried about getting that claw in from behind there. So let's go ahead and invert that selection now. I'm gonna start with uh, getting that back claw. Oops, undid my selection there. Invert that one and get this back claw built up. So go into that lighter color here. You see that really just separates that into two different pieces, even though they're on the same layer. That's why that lasso works so well. Of course, in some of my previous tutorials, like I said, I'm used to kind of, uh, you know, having not unlimited layers in Procreate, but a lot more to mess around with. So sometimes like in this case, you know, I would do these separate, maybe just depends. It's a little bit less work than lassoing everything, but this is definitely gonna help out. I think those people that might struggle with the, uh, the lack of layers on a lower iPad. So now let's go ahead and do this backside here. Go back to, actually that was our darker one, so let's go to our lighter one here towards the front. And there we go, so we've got that built up pretty well, and let's go ahead and do the same thing then to this side. Since there's only two of these, I won't uh, time lapse this. We'll just keep it the way it is here. Do this back claw first. Let's again go into our lighter color. building up that line first down here to separate those and then pulling the shadow up and around in the back here. And from here, I'll probably have a kind of shadow heavier here on the back, but also I have one on the front because this is gonna kind of give off a cast shadow too, that front claw. Just kind of building up a three-dimensional shape and this will be even more apparent once we go in and add the highlights too. It's gonna to build up even more of that three-dimensional quality to it. And going back in with my darker one here just to build up some more there. So there we go. Let's go ahead and hit this backside a little bit of the other one. We can just go ahead and turn that off now. Get this a little bit, not too much though. So I'm gonna go back in and kind of clean it up a little bit. It's gonna be really light here on that side. Don't want too much. And now let's go ahead and get that arm. So once again, just dragging this down, following that curve, that claw. Going back up to our lighter one and then knocking in that shadow here underneath. So you see how clean that is, the separation, and you can really see it looks like two different pieces. 
Which is that. Let's go ahead and drop our size down pretty far so we can get this line of the crease in there. I'm going to switch back to the body color here and kind of taper this one off a little bit more on the edges here at the end. There we go. I'm just going to kind of build this up and around to give it that three-dimensional feel too. This one is pretty close to the light source, so I'm trying to keep this one a little bit lighter than the one on the other side. Still want to have that kind of natural curve though. And that's gonna be achieved too once we get to the highlights. That's pretty good on that one. I'm gonna go back here now, kind of match these up. This one's a little bit more subtle than this one. So I'm gonna go back in here with the red a little bit and just kind of get that just a little bit tighter on the side. All right, there we go. All right, looks pretty good. Let's uh, real quick add one more kind of shadow here on the side here. Not too crazy. Okay, so there we go, we're good. I think next up, I wanna kind of build up underneath these eyes. So that's what we're gonna work on next. So to do this, basically we need to go to the body layer here. And I'm gonna go just once again with that lighter color of the shadow and just kind of hit really thin underneath the eyes. I want to get too thick and I want it to be pretty tight around there because we're going to go ahead and add in a, another color here. So I'm going to go and select this pink of the body. And try to build up kind of like a shine underneath here. So it's going to be kind of the illusion of that eyelid popping out. there same thing here on this side and then we're going to build up underneath this with that dark or the uh, lighter shadow color again so this is going to kind of make that pop out stand out even more so it looks like it's kind of jutting out from underneath the eye This is gonna be kind of a back and forth process to get this to look just right. A little bit heavier here. There we go, and then I'm gonna hit it with some white too. That looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna get just a tad bit darker under the bottom and we should be good on that. I'm gonna make sure that it's still in that red part. It's not dipping down to that body and it's really close right there, so. All right, there we go. So we're done with that. Let's go ahead and let's see what do we wanna do next. Let's go ahead and do the body here since we're on that. So again, making sure we're on that lighter color and go ahead and get shadowed in here. Of course, the eye being big with the light source coming in here is going to give off that effect. And then just kind of bringing this around this backside. Make that texture a little bit smaller there. You see the motion that I'm doing is just basically following the curve of the shape. So it's given that three dimensional feel. Once again, this is gonna be even more apparent once we add in the darker and then also the highlights too. It's gonna to make that pop even more. All right, there we go. Next up, let's go ahead and work on the mouth a little bit. So here we're gonna go back to the lighter shade of the shadow. I'm going to turn my sketch back on so I can see where I had this at. 
And we're just gonna kinda draw in the shadow here. Turn that back off now. And once again, this is kind of a back and forth process. So selecting the pink of the body, we can go back in and kind of define that just a tad bit more with a smaller brush. So it's not as blendy. If you were working on a separate layer right now for shadows, this would be kind of where you go in and, you know, use the eraser. But since we're using alpha lock, using the eraser here would just absolutely erase everything. You see here, I kind of went over the line. This is where too, you might want to put the uh, mouth on maybe the upper layer with the eyes. That's a possibility too, so you don't draw over it like I did. But we can fix that here. I'm just going to go back to that texture grain. There we go. So now let's go ahead and kind of, once again, going in with the dark, kind of build up this bottom part of the lip. So it's gonna have a little bit more to it. Going back to our paper now. With this, just gotta get the right size. Don't want it to look like a line, but at the same time, don't want it to be too big that it takes up too much of the design. Then we go back in with the pink and then kind of touch that up just a tad. All right, so we got the bottom lip. Let's go ahead and do the top now. This is going to just kind of make this indent just a little bit. So if we follow this along just real lightly, a little bit heavier here towards the back. back in with that pink again kind of clean that up just a tad bit now I'm gonna go back in with white to add some extra highlights there to kind of make this look a little bit more three-dimensional Going back in with pink and just lighten it up just a tad. All right, there we go. So that's pretty much got the mouth done. Let's go ahead and work on the eyes now, and then we'll go back in and do highlights. So right here, this blue color, we'll select that. Go to the eyes, and we're going to alpha lock these. And then going in once again with our paper brush and just kind of going around the sides. Press heavier here to the side and then kind of let up my pressure as I come out as I'm building up that three-dimensional shape there. And this blue is basically our light shadow color. We're going to go back in here in a second with the darker one. So there's that. Right here, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there is another color there. That's going to be our darker shadow. And we're just going to hit the edges. And darken that up, letting up as we go in towards the center so it's got that nice fade to it. All right, there we go. So it looks good. Let's add a little bit of highlights to the eyes now, the pupils. So selecting this, we're gonna go to alpha lock. And then let's go to this light color of shadow. Since this is so dark, this is actually gonna work kind of as a highlight now on this one. So we'll just hit this up at the top here. And I'm gonna bring that white back in just a little bit where it went over, oops.
And then the eyebrow. Let's go ahead and hit that with a little bit darker of a shadow here. On the side and then on the bottom here. Pulling that out like that. Cool. All right. So we've got that done. Now it's time to jump back in and do highlights. So if we go back to our layer with the claws and the arms and the legs and then go down to this color here, it's kind of like an eggshell color. That's what we're going to use for the highlights. So once again, using the paper. And with this one, we're not going to go clear to the edge with the highlights uh, on any of the, the parts. So it doesn't matter um, that we don't have these lassoed. It's not going to mess up any of the stuff that we've done. Uh, it's going to be perfectly fine. And if you do go to the edge on these sides, it doesn't matter because we're alpha lock. So it's not going to go outside, but we're not going to go clear to the edges here. So our kind of separation is going to stay intact there. You can see how just already this is building up like a huge amount of dimension to the design. It's really kind of bringing home all that stuff that we laid in earlier. This just has such a nice curve to it. When you combine the highlights and the shadows together, they work together in tandem to just make an awesome design. And with these, they're going to be underneath, so I'm not going to do some crazy highlights down here, but I just want a little bit of a difference here. You can see just by doing that little bit, just how crazy it gives that three dimensional look to it. Just fantastic. And we're just going to repeat this around here. I'm just doing the super light too. It's one of the bad things I know watching the videos. You can, you know, watch my hands do everything on screen, but not knowing as far as how hard I'm pressing down, it's really something you're going to have to just kind of play around with on your own. This, there's barely any pressure being applied right now. Just to give you an idea, this is what I'm pressing down. So this is just barely dragging the Apple Pencil across there. I think looking at this too, um, once I get to the body and add the highlights in there, I'm going to bring the shadow down just a little bit more around the, the bottom of the belly. That one. This one I got to be careful because I don't want to go too close to that edge because I don't want to destroy that line. So going with a smaller size brush and then making it bigger. As you pull out or around, we'll work to keep those separated. That looks good. Let's go ahead and switch back then to the body. Like I said, I want to do a little bit more shadow wise down here on the bottom just to make it look a little bit more three dimensional. Kind of looks flat down there. I think going back in with that darker one and hitting that a little bit more down here. There we go. Cool, cool. All right, so I'm going to switch back then and do the highlights now. So going back to that eggshell color. Getting around here. It's not going to be too much of a highlight here, but I do want it to look a little bit different, not just totally flat across there. So that looks pretty good, I think. And then now we can go back in and just make these highlights really pop by going in with white. So I'm going to select my white here and we're on the body so we can just start here. And just adding in really bright white highlights. This I don't want to get too big. I want it to be almost like line highlights like that. And then switching back to my claws and my arms. Same thing here. You can just start to kind of put in some brighter highlights to really kind of bring home that shine and that glow to the design. Wouldn't overdo it and wouldn't do them too big. Like here, it's kind of taken over that eggshell that we did before. So that's when I would adjust the, the size down to make sure that it's not too big. Still want that kind of gradation between that white and then the, the eggshell there. I want you to be able to tell that there's two different colors there without actually thinking about it, I guess. 
Oh, that's the body. I'm on the wrong one. Good. Go back to the body then and just hit a couple of these small little circle ones. There. Build that up just a tad bit more there. This one I get a little bit darker, I think. This is kind of where I go back and forth with with a design towards the end and think, okay, this I could kind of fix here, this I could fix here. I know this tutorial is super long, and I usually don't do them this long. That's why a lot of times I'll have people comment like, oh, you missed this part here, you missed this part here. And a lot of times I see it, but if I'm trying to keep a tutorial in a certain time limit, I'll kind of skip over some of that stuff because it kind of goes without saying, yeah, that, that part needed done, but just missed it the first go around this time since i'm taking so long with this tutorial anyways i just might as well go back in and make it perfect They might do just a little dot over here on the side. Like that to bring it home. Pull this out just a little bit more. So this is when I really go back and forth on a design and think, okay, yeah, I can make this better. I could do this better. I could do this better. I usually don't try that too much in the in the tutorials just to keep them flowing, but. Like I said, this one a little bit different. So I'm going to take a longer amount of time with this one. You can see what it's like to do like a full on design when I kind of rethink things and go back through. I'm not really worried about anybody saying, oh, this is too long. That's one of my pieces of advice to you is if you're doing a design, don't feel like you've got to rush through it, you know, unless you're on some crazy deadline for something. If it's something you're just making for fun or trying to learn, especially following along with videos like mine and whoever else you might watch or take lessons or tutorials from, definitely take your time, you know, uh, get it to where you, you think it's pretty good. Don't rush it. But at the same time, too, don't beat yourself up and stick, you know, with one project or, or trying to fix a mouth like this for you know a month that that just does no good so if you're having problems with something put it down and come back to it and see if it it works out later you know all right so there we go so i really kind of realized like kind of three-dimensional quality design let's turn these off now so we can go back you know just starting from that sketch layer and not using any outlines and we're left with something like this which honestly kind of has that more uh like i said rendered 3d-esque uh almost like a a sculpting program like you know blender or zbrush or something along those lines but hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did if you hung into the end i appreciate you uh more tutorials like this might be coming i don't know let me know in the comments I know YouTube, it seems like people's attention spans are really, really short. However, other people are more than willing to go to Udemy and Skillshare and pay money to watch a two and a half hour class, which I don't really understand. If you're getting stuff for free on YouTube, why complain about it being too long, but other people are willing to pay? I don't know. Let me know what you guys like as far as links of videos. Do you like stuff that lasts a little bit longer like this? That's a little bit more of a deep dive. What do you prefer? short or long and do you guys use uh, Skillshare or Udemy something I'm considering doing for really really long in-depth tutorials where I can you know spend hours on a design and it's not something that feels rushed so leave me a comment let me know as for me I can be found online bjdell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjdell the new podcast make money with your art available now wherever you listen to podcasts at I will link that in the description below great way for you to learn about what I do with my business, the way I've turned my hobby and my passion for art into a full-time career. So that's it for today. And until next time, keep creating.